Hello everyone and welcome to episode 5 of my introductory series on design and CAD. In this series we're using the in-context, parametric and solid modeling features of Fusion 360 to design an electronics enclosure. In the previous episode we used some quite advanced modeling features such as construction geometry and the revolve feature in order to create the volume knob. In this episode we're going to be looking at exporting the files that we've created up to now as STLs and then putting them into a slicer, slicing them into G-code so we can use them on our 3D printers. Jumping right back into Fusion 360 where we left it, you can see I have made a few changes, which is pretty much just color. Uh, I'm not going to show you how to do this right now, but maybe we'll do that in a later episode or in another series. For now, we want to export some STL files. An STL file, if you don't already know, is the file that you can load into a slicer program for 3D printing. It's very easy to make them in Fusion 360. All we do is make and 3D print. This brings up your little 3D print dialog box, which allows you to select what you want to export and the definition or refinement of that exported file. So first thing you need to do is make your selection. You can do it either over here or directly in the graphics window. First thing we're going to export is the amp enclosure top. And you can see it's already come up with a preview of the mesh, the number of triangles made to build that mesh and the refinement level. So our refinement level is set to medium. The refinement level basically defines the amount of triangles that will be used to define a curve. So if we look down here at the edge of our fillet, you can see at the moment is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven triangles to define a 90 degree fillet. If we change that to low, it's now one, two, three, four, so half. If we change it to high, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So you can see how more refinement gives you a finer detailed mesh, but it can be a little overkill. A good rule of thumb that I found is if you have a simple curvature, like a simple radius or fillet, then medium is probably fine. If you have a sort of double curvature, like a sphere or anything that's rounded in two directions, then you might want to move to high. If you have anything that's aesthetic, then you almost certainly want to be at high because you don't want any print artifacts in large curvatures or anything like that. And if you're making really basic geometry that's all just squares, rectangles, then low will be absolutely fine because STLs are great at drawing flat square things with sharp corners. So we're going to leave our refinement at medium for now. There are additional refinement options if you want to adjust things manually, but that's a little bit beyond the scope of the video. The last thing you can do is change the output so you can send it directly to a 3D print utility such as Mesh Mixer, Mesh Mixer or any of these others. And that allows you to do some post-processing or add support material or however you want to do that. But for now, we don't need that. So just leave it as this. And then you click OK and it will bring up a dialog box where you can save your file in Windows Explorer. Give your file a sensible name and click save. And that's it. That's your STL file exported. Now you need to do the same process for all the other bodies. By bodies, I mean anything that's like a solid single item. So in this example, we have in total the top, the base and the volume tile, the three things that we've designed. Don't forget to write down or locate or remember the location of your files because they're what you need to import into a slicer. Now that we've exported all three STL files, we can import those into a slicer where we can change it from that mesh format of the STL into a layer by layer G code format, which can be directly 3D printed. So this is Pusha Control, the slicer we're going to be using today. I wouldn't say it's the best or most powerful slicer, but it's a simple tool and an effective one, especially if you own a Pusha i3 Mark III or Mark II printer. So it's just what I'm going to be using today. It's simple and it'll get the job done. And it's sufficient for me to explain what I need to explain for the purposes of this video. So first we're just going to open a file. We're going to import the STLs that we exported from Fusion 360. So file and import model file. From there you want to browse to the location of your files. Highlight, you can highlight all of them at once if you wish to and click open. It might ask you, as it's several bodies at once, if you want to merge them into a multicolored part. 
We don't want to do that. We just want to have three individual parts. From there, you can go and drag them around the bed to place them where you like. If you're familiar with 3D printing already, then you'll probably have noticed that the orientation of these parts is less than optimal. For example, this dial will be very difficult to print like that. You're going to need support material around the edges. The inside hole is going to end up full of support material, potentially. It's not going to have very good bed adhesion because there's very little surface area. So we need to adjust these things. Also, the top is going to have some huge overhangs, which is a little bit unnecessary. To solve this, let's reorientate the parts. To fix this, we need to rotate the parts. Now, you might think, well, because it needs to go up, we're going to rotate about the z-axis, but that is the z-axis pointing up, so you'd only be twisting things around. This is rotation around the z-axis. If you're at all familiar with 3D printing, you've probably noticed that the orientation of these parts is not very good for 3D printing. That's because we've just imported them in the exact orientation in which we modeled them. If you look closely, you'll be able to see that these can be almost positioned exactly where they were created in our model. What we need to do is reorient those for 3D printing. We could do this in Fusion 360, but in this case, we're just going to do it in our slicer. So we need to select the part that is in the incorrect orientation and rotate it 90 degrees. In fact, we want to, in this case, go to minus 90 degrees. Excellent. And then this one as well. Again, this one to flip it all the way over this time. So the big flat face is facing down. So 180 degree rotation. Once we've rotated the parts to be in their correct orientation, we can use the auto arrange tool to arrange them on the bed in a suitable manner. You just literally click it. Now for your print settings, it's important obviously to make sure you select the right material for the temperature, etc. Your layer height, we're going to leave at 0.15. In fact, let's raise it to 0.3 because quick is fine for me. Standard infill, 20% will be more than enough for this. No support needed because we've designed it to so be not needing support. And I don't think we'll need a brim. We're printing in PLA. There's some big flat surfaces. I don't think there's going to be any problems with peeling or curling or anything like that. Now that we've got our parts all correctly orientated and arranged, we just need to select the print settings. So PLA for the temperature of the nozzle and bed, the quality, so the layer height, the infill, so the amount of plastic within the body, and any support material or brim. We won't need support material because we've designed it and oriented them so that we don't need that. The infill, 20% is fine. You could probably go down to 15 if you wanted to. Draft, this is going to basically determine your appearance or quality as long as your print can as long as your printer quality is generally good then this will be better if it's lower that's really shit way of explaining that for the quality lower is obviously better but it also takes a lot longer so i'm going to leave it with 0.3 because i think that's fine for the appearance that i need and material obviously temperature settings and the material that you're using and then you can go ahead and click generate once you click generate, it's going to create a G-code file and give you a preview. From the preview, you want to make sure that this is going to look like what you think it's going to look like. You don't want any big gaps in your STL file. You don't want anything missing. You don't want any multiple bodies when there should be single bodies. And this all looks about right to me. We can see from the information at the bottom of the screen that there's an estimated print time and estimated filament usage provided. They may not be precise. In fact, they probably won't be very precise, but they should be quite close. Once you've done that, you can save the G-code. And again, give it a suitable name, save it somewhere where you're not going to lose it, and click Save. Once you've saved that file, you can send it off to your printer and hit Print. So that's it for Episode 5. All that's left for you to do now is to print it. Let's have a recap. First, we created our reference geometry in Fusion 360 directly from the electronics of the headphone amplifier. Next, we modeled the top and the bottom of the enclosure using some simple features like extrude, but doing them in an in-context and parametric way that means that adjusting the base electronics will adjust our enclosure as well. In the next episode, we moved on to creating the volume dial using some slightly more advanced features like construction geometry and revolve. In this episode, we've created our STLs and exported them into a slicer where we can slice it into a g-code which we can now put on an sd card to print if you followed along and i really hope you have then i hope you learned as much as i did along the way 
If you have, let me know what you've learned in the comments below and how you plan to use your newfound skills. If you're still stuck though, don't worry about it, don't panic. You can watch the series again or ask any questions you might have in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this series. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe, share it with your friends or people that you don't know online, any 3D printing groups that you might be a part of that might find it useful. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram for some behind the scenes and chatting and stuff that happens on Twitter. And I'll see you in the next one.